Hey guys and welcome to this week's vlog. Today it's very exciting because I am going to a show jumping lesson with both the horses, Cal and Dali. So yeah, it's been a long time coming guys. I have not been to a lesson in so long since last year really um, because of the coronavirus and then before that I was at college so I wasn't riding so yes it has been a long time. Um, so yeah, I'm going with Cal and Dali. Cal is a six year old, he's jumping 120 and I only had I think one lesson on him before this. I actually have a vlog of it and that was a whole year ago so it'll be very interesting to watch that back and see how we compare. So I will leave a link like in either corner, one of these corners <laughs> to that. Um, and then Dali, he is only four years old, so he has never been to a lesson before. Um, so it's always that moment where you're like, please don't think I'm, I've like completely messed this horse up. But I'm only kidding, I don't think that's gonna happen. Because Dali is a very good boy. Um, so yeah, there's always that little part of you that wants your trainer to be like slightly impressed by your young horse, but we will see. <laughs> so the guy that I get lessons off is called Taylor Bard. He is very very good um he was chef to keep the irish team he has loads of experience rides himself he's also just like so kind to the horses you know what i mean like he's always giving them treats and giving out to me for not petting them enough and stuff like that like you know you just i i just really appreciate people like, like that who are just so kind and really care about the horses a lot um yeah, there's too many people in this sport who just see them as a means to an end kind of thing, as a machine, not as an actual animal. So, yeah, that's why we absolutely love him. Um, he is an hour and a half away, unfortunately, so it's going to be a bit of a long day with an hour and a half drive and then riding the two horses and then an hour and a half home. So I'm very thankful to my daddy for bringing me. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't actually have a license to the lorry, like that's why I can't go on my own. Just FYI, some people asked. Um, but yeah. Did you hear him? Did you hear him neighing? So that's Cal, he is in the stable already. I need to go get Dali, I need to groom them. I'm gonna give my tack a quick wipe because your girl gotta impress. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get going and I will see you when we're loading probably. Now out in this field we have Welbeck, Fiona, the two pregnant mama G's. Um, people always ask me for updates but there is literally nothing to update you guys on. Tally, this is not all about you. They're just in the field really fat. Look how fat Fiona is. She actually looks like she's foaling this year. They're not, they're foaling next year. So yeah, they just chill out in the field, do absolutely nothing. Um, and that's kind of it. Hello Fiona, my gorgeous girl. Okay, but this is the guy we want today. Mr. Dolly! You excited for your first lesson? Yeah. How long have you been videoing? And you tried to video a portrait? Hey guys, so I am here now getting ready. I have one boot on, one boot not on. <laughs> and yeah, just gonna get tacked up. We're here nice and early because we weren't sure how long it would take us. Actually, it didn't take us as long as we thought. So, excited. <laughs> Cal's going first. I'm so excited. Cal's made a new friend. He's a little doggy. Hello. Do you like your new friend, Mr. Cal? He says he's so cute. No, don't go out. No, you can't go out the door. <laughs> I know you like your friend. Look who Holly has picked up. We stole a dog. <laughs> we stole a little doggy. It's, it's so not cute. a dog. That's a horse. It's a little doggy. It's, it's so not cute. a dog. It's a horse. He's going to be my show dog. It's not a dog. It's We're going to show us because he's so cute. Oh, no. It's an elephant, actually. It's an elephant. Oh. No, it's, it's my master. Wife. He's so tiny, though. What? It's a kangaroo. <laughs> 
Callie boy, ready for your lesson. Dad, why do you look so sad? Look at this view, guys. Gorgeous. You can actually see the sea. But not as good as this view. Oh, and also that. Be that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, so I'm going to do a bit of a voiceover and just kind of pop in and out to tell you guys what we're up to in the lesson. So obviously we start by warming up. Um, Taylor doesn't really care about where the head is or anything like that. It's just about having impulsion and being straight. You'll also notice that we always ride off the track. So we're like on the three quarter line um, of the long side. And this is to make sure that the horse is straight. The horse is listening to both my legs. I don't have one leg stronger than the other. Even when we're circling, um, we don't do too much of an inside bend. Just trying to use my outside rein, outside leg to keep him nice and straight through the shoulders. Um, because this will be really helpful when I'm jumping. When you're jumping, you want them really straight through the corners so that you're straight going to the jump. Now we pop into the canter, um, again, off the track, staying nice and straight, uh, doing some circles, um, and just kind of keeping him between my hand and leg. He was really, really good um, for all of this, really. He was a very, very good boy on the flat. Taylor had me going over these poles on the track. Um, I know it sounds really simple, but the problem I have is that Again. I tip forward and look down coming to the jump. So I had to look up, like I couldn't look at the pole when I was cantering over it, which sounds so easy, but guys, it was like riding to the jump and to the pole with my eyes closed. Like I felt like I had no idea where the pole was. So he said to ride to it until I knew like I was on the right stride and then just look up and man, it felt weird at first. But I did get it and yeah, it felt less weird and we went along. But that's what I need to do when I'm jumping as well. Um, yeah, just help me stop looking down. And I keep my upper body up, not take off, instead of being forward too much. So yeah, it looked like a really simple exercise, but that's why we were doing it. Very good. And you knew you had to keep the contact and you knew you had to keep your leg on. Yeah. So looking down is not going to benefit you at all. Good. She's not supposed to look down. What's the feel? What's your horse feet? What's your horse feet? Good. Good. You felt your horse feet in more pressure. Yeah. So then we moved on to jumping and over this little grid I had to again not look down. Instead I'd use my feel to realise if I needed to move forward or sit him up to reach the pole correctly. So there was a trot pole to a cross pole, one stride, a pole, a bounce pole, one stride and then another pole. And he switched this up quite a bit so um, then we moved to like two strides until the pole, then it was two long strides, then it was two short strides. And I had to just keep feeling what the horse needed instead of looking down and looking at the pole. Um, so here I think it's changed again. Oh yeah, so here he's put up the second part. So now it's changed to um, a vertical as the second part and then one stride pole, two strides pole. So again, 
I just have to keep feeling what he needs to reach the balls correctly. So now it is the second part is an oxer, um, which just changes it a little bit. And again, we're doing short two strides and then long two strides and then all sorts of different ones. So I had to keep, um, you know, riding really in the moment. And even sometimes Taylor wouldn't tell me if it was short or long. I would just have to figure it out. <laughs> um, but I was kind of finding it hard to meet the cross pull. It just didn't feel like super smooth. Um, and then Taylor asked me to come in sitting trot and oh my word it helped so much oh, sorry it's actually the next time see how like that i don't know that just it didn't feel very like nice and smooth but then this time i come and sit and trot and it makes such a difference like i feel really with him i feel like i can put leg on much easier um i feel like it was easier to, for me to keep my upper body up it was like so much easier so yes yeah, so i was delighted with that <laughs> but i will have to just uh, like learn to come in rising trot and yeah just I don't know practice it more I suppose it was kind of hard <laughs> so next we moved on to just jumping an oxer on its own again really focusing on me not looking at the fence looking past the fence and sitting sitting up there was two little poles on the ground in front of the jump which is what he looked at that first time um, and then getting the flying change afterwards as well. That's something else we were working on, but mostly my position and not um, yet yeah, tipping forward. So now I'm coming off in the other rein and he jumped this really well, stayed really nice and upright, so I was delighted oh, with that. That's very good. For such a deep stride. That's very good. And then we just jumped this double twice to finish off. Again, really focusing on sitting up, not looking at the jump, looking past the jump. Um, and then sitting up for that second part because that is often what catches me out in competitions is the second part of doubles or the last part of a triple because I lose a stride um, after I land because I don't sit up quick enough. So yeah, practicing that. So next up was Mr. Daly, the four-year-old. Um, so just starting off, just trotting him around, warming him up a little bit. Again, staying off the track. So um, making sure that he's nice and straight. He's not drifting one way or the other. He's li listening to both my legs equally um, and everything like that. So he was a very good boy. He settled down really quickly in the new environment. So I was pleased with him with that. So then we start changing direction, um, changing the rein really, really often because through the turn or sometimes after the turn, he slows down a little bit or he speeds up. So I'm really focusing on keeping the same rhythm all the time. Also not tipping forward when I change the diagonal or when I'm going through the turn, just always staying really straight and upright and keeping that rhythm the same, the same trot the whole way around, even through the turns, even when changing direction. then i pop him into canter we did lots of canter work actually i have a lot of video of it so i thought i'd cut it a little bit short and just tell you what we were working on so the main two things were straightness and impulsion so making sure that he stayed straight up the long side when we went off the track and also the impulsion uh, taylor was telling me i need a little bit more uh just 
a little bit, yeah, a little bit more kick in the counter, um, but not faster. It just needs more energy. So I was focusing on that. These clips is before I actually started really moving it forward. So, <laughs> so that's the before. Um, and also through the turns and through the circles, I had to keep that impulsion going because he tended to die off a little bit at some points of the circle and then speed up at others. So it's just keeping that rhythm, keeping that strong canter, but without it, without letting it get too quick. So then Taylor asked me if I had started doing flying changes with him and I said I hadn't because I didn't really think his canter was that balanced yet but Taylor said he was ready so we decided to just kind of introduce them to him a little bit. So I haven't, I'm no expert at teaching flying changes is basically what I'm saying um, but I really like this method that Taylor was showing me. So we just cantered around, um, went across the diagonal and went on to the opposite rein and all I had to do was just keep him in a balanced canter. Um, I wasn't like asking him to canter. I was just showing him that it's a little bit uncomfortable for him to canter on the wrong leg. And then to see if he would offer up the change or see if he would figure that out. Um, he, I think this time he does change in front. Yeah, he changes in front there. Doesn't quite figure out the back legs. Um... But again, we just have to keep him. I just had to stay really relaxed, not stress him out. Um, and I think, yeah, then he changed back onto the wrong lead. So we just rewarded him, brought him back to trot because he stayed relaxed. He tried, he tried to do the front um, leg change. So that was a good start. So then we tried it again on the opposite rein. So going from the right to left lead change. So again, coming around on the right rein, um, pick a diagonal to go across and then just kind of holding him, um, not in an outward flexion. So it's, I'm not holding him the counter counter, I'm keeping him as straight as I can. So he got the front lead change much quicker this time. He figured it out from the last attempt. Um, didn't get the back lead counter for quite a while. I know it looks really awkward. I just had to sit really relaxed, but then he figured it out. And he got his flying change and we give him huge pats. Um, and it's just about showing like him learning how to do that because it's pretty hard coordination to figure out how to change their leg and they do just have to learn. So now we come around again and give it a go on the other end and he changes his front lead straight away and changes back lead very soon after. So again, huge pats. Lots of praise and he comes back into trot um, to have a little break. <laughs> so then we started jumping. Again, we just did the same grid um, at the start, just trotting into this cross pull to get him kind of warmed up. Um, we soon figured out that he is much stronger on the left rein. So we started just coming to the jump off the right rein because it was our right turns that really needed a lot of work. So when I was turning right, I needed to use my my right leg first and then use my hand to kind of bend his body in the correct direction and give him a little bit of a warning before I turned. And the same after the jump, I needed to keep him much straighter. He tended to drift to the right, which would then um, make it hard to make a nice right turn because he was already drifting that way. So I had to keep him really straight, bend him around my right leg and then make a nice turn. All the while, I had to keep looking up, didn't I? I had to keep my keep what I learned from Cal and transfer it over. I had to keep my body really nice and still and up in the air. He also did a few more of practicing at the flying changes, which he was a very good boy for. Just to say, I've ma I'm making this voiceover a few days later and I tried the flying changes again today and he got two perfectly clean ones and on one rein. One rein, he's much better than the other. So one rain he did two really perfect ones and on the other rain he was just a little bit late behind. So absolutely delighted with him. Um, so yeah, I'm just coming around again, making sure those turns are nice. And he jumped that one really, really nicely, landed on the correct leg, stayed really nice and straight, made a nice turn, stayed really soft in his neck. So he got a nice big pat um, and then we moved on to a single fence. Don't 
Eyes up. Wait. Eyes up. Wait. There you go. Beautiful. And a lovely balance afterwards. So as you can hear there, the first jump I didn't wait with my body, but then the second time we got it bang on and he jumped really well. I need you reacting quicker to prevent him pulling to the right when he lands. So I want an open left rein when you land. Open left rein. Feel the difference? Lovely change in front. Lovely change. Okay. And then to finish, we jump down this line. He really spooked quite a lot at the first part because of the poles on the ground which meant i had to really ride for the four strides and then he jumped the oxer absolutely class and um, so we kind of left him on that really nice jump and just trotted him off uh, he'd worked really hard on that lesson so i was absolutely delighted with him hey guys we are home now the horses are in their stables eating some feed so i would have already done a voiceover so you kind of know what we were doing in the lesson but just to sum it up, absolutely delighted with the two boys. Um, Taylor was very, very complimentary of how they're getting on and what like level they're at, which is brilliant. Um, yeah, we didn't have any like huge big issues to work on, just lots of very like little things. Um, but they do all add up and I want to be the best I can be guys. So yeah, delighted with the two boys. This weekend, we will go to Cavan. On the Saturday, Cal will jump the 120 and Daddy will jump the 90 and his first metre. If he goes clear in the metre, he qualifies for the four-year-old class on Sunday. Um, so if he does do that, then, then we will go to Cavan on the Sunday as well. But if he doesn't, and they've both kind of jumped well, I, I'll see if I do the two days. We might just do the one day. Um, because the following weekend is a three-day show at Mullingar, which is super close to us and really, really handy. Hello. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's more... It's yeah more convenient to do a three-day show closer to home than having to drive up and down each day to Calvin. hello baby did you have fun dally was a super boy really nice and chilled out um yeah taylor said the best thing about the two horses is their temperament they're just so quiet so easy going so yeah makes them very very sellable when the that time does come so yeah i'm gonna finish the video now um i hope you enjoyed it and Oh, what is these faces? You look crazy. <laughs> um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I haven't done a lesson vlog in so long because I haven't had a lesson so long. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I'm not sure if I'll get out to many more lessons before I go somewhere, which I haven't told you yet, but it's gonna be like a really sad, but also kind of good, but like kind of bad, but also kind of good. You know what I mean? It's gonna be that kind of announcement. Which is coming next week, I'm going to tell you guys. I've known for ages, but I've just been putting off telling you, which is really bad. But I'm going to tell you tomorrow, next week. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, probably next week. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's where I'm going to end the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell notification thing. Because I'm a top YouTuber and I say that now. Yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye guys.